What is up everyone, this is Kyle from the TF Review, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 3 Ninja Megazord, or Power Rangers the Movie Ninja Megazord, or Kaku Ranger Kakuur Daishogun. What is the difference between those three things? Absolutely nothing there. All exactly the same thing, just presented in three different ways. Uh, we maybe a couple sticker differences, but that's basically it. Now, this is one of my favorite Megazords as a kid. Uh, now, of course, it's a little different. You know, you change opinions, but I always thought that this was the most fun. Now, depending on which continuity uh, you followed, whether it be the movie season three, I couldn't tell you about Super Sentai because I have no clue. I've never watched Kaku Ranger. Uh, but in the movie, of course, you know, they go to the temple and they're led by Dulcia and they defeat the guards and they win the power of the Ninjetti Zords and then they're given these Megazords. Uh, well, they're given kind of variants of these Megazords uh, because the movie design took a little bit of liberties and was the most horrible thing you've ever seen in your entire life, if you've seen the movie. Uh, in the show, they go to the Temple of Power, I believe, and they're met by Ninjor, who kind of gives them the powers of these Megazords. So they're, they're, again, presented in two different ways, but it is, of course, the same exact toy, whether you bought the movie edition or the TV edition. Uh, the only difference, again, is the box and the way it's been presented to the audience uh, from a story perspective. Uh, so now, again, we do have, and again, depending on what you watched, it's also named a little bit different. We have the Red Ape Ninja Zord, or the Ninja Ape Sword, if you watch the movie, the Blue Wolf Ninja Sword, or the Ninja Wolf Sword in the movie, Black Frog Ninja Sword, or the Ninja Frog Sword in the movie, Pink Crane Sword, or the Ninja Crane Sword in the movie, and of course the Yellow Bear Sword uh, in the TV show, or the Ninja Bear Sword in the movie. Uh, now I also have the Falcon Sword back here, and I'm going to go ahead and show uh, the Falcon Sword what that does. Uh, a little bit later, but I'm not going to really go into detail. I'm just going to show its combination, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this to the side for now. Uh, and this is the core team. So when you bought the set, this is what you got. You also got uh, these pieces, which formed fists uh, to cover the wolf and the ape. And you also got two swords for the ape. Uh, now, the swords are some of the hardest accessories you're going to find uh, if you do try and get this toy. They're insanely hard to find. You're probably not going to find them. And... Uh, they're really not necessary. They're just basic little pieces of plastic that look like swords. Uh, and at that, I'm going to go ahead and start with the Ape Sword. Uh, now, the Ape Sword is kind of okay. It, it, it really doesn't fit in with the rest of them. You have kind of more very sleek, robotic-looking animals. And then you have this old-looking samurai character who happens to be an ape even though he really doesn't even look like an ape uh, now to get the ape sword uh, ready for his arm mode what you can do is collapse his arms and then you're going to open his back and you'll notice his arms just kind of go uh, limp you can go ahead fold them underwards underwards is that a word underwards uh, that locks into place and there you go you also want to take this fist piece that i showed you a little bit ago uh, make sure it's pointed this way, and there you go, there is his arm. We can put this to the side. Uh, moving on to the wolf sword, which is, again, my favorite. Uh, I just think it looks so sleek and stylistic. I wish they did a Megazord like this, uh, that, that looks like it belongs in a live-action movie. Super sleek, uh, but very, very simple. His tail wags, his mouth opens, his paws can move forward and back, but it's not really posable articulation, it's just for the transformation. Uh, and he has have a uh, peg cock right there at the bottom for, uh, you know, pleasuring. So, you know, be careful when you're fiddling his pegs and inserting them into the ports. Just saying. Uh, to get him into arm mode, you're just going to fold down his front legs first. There's an order of operations here, so front legs first, rear legs back, tail, uh, and this glove piece will cover... You don't need the glove piece, and I'll show you why a little bit later. But for the Megazord, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to keep it like that. Next up is the Bear Zord. The Bear Zord is a big girl. Uh, her legs, at least on mine, are a little bit loose. There's a screw back there. I feel like if I was to tighten it, that might fix the issue. Uh, it also comes with this little piece, and this piece is very easy to lose. Chances are, if you buy this second hand, you are going to get it without this piece. But they can be purchased. Uh, there are people 
on various, you know, forums, ranger board and whatnot that do reproductions, uh, in case you do want that. Uh, now she doesn't have any real articulation, it's all necessary for the transformation, uh, other than her mouth opening and closing, which is again very nice. Nothing going on back here except a couple of pegs, she's got literally four buttholes. Uh, and that's basically it. Now to get her into her chest mode, uh, I really like this. You know, take her arms, fold them down, press them in. Now you have to make sure they're they're in all the way, otherwise it's not going to collapse. And it just collapsed like that. Then you want to rotate her legs forward and reveal these chrome bits. And that's it. Now lastly, we've got the Frog Zord. And I think the Frog Zord is the only Megazord we will ever receive where the toy is bigger than the actual animal. And I think that is great. Uh, this is a one-to-one -one scale frog. And that is just amazing. I love this toy just for that. Uh, and, the, and this frog actually has a good amount of articulation. The arms can move. Uh, the legs can really do some realistic leg kickers. Uh, if you want to get, you know, some crazy, crazy frog poses. And that I dig. And the frog itself is unique because it just forms just the leg. Uh, and to get it into leg mode, all we want to do, straighten the legs out. Expose these stickers. Fold the feet down. Um... And we're halfway there. Then what we can do, make sure the frog's feet are facing downwards, and they just actually slot into place. That actually, that's perfect. It slots into place like that. Like it's working out, working out. Uh, and then when you're ready, you just set it like that, click it down, and it'll lock into place. It's a nice firm lock. Uh, and lastly, we've got the crane sword. And the crane sword is a lot of fun because it, it is really wishable. You can just wish, 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 uh, and I love that. It's a lot of fun. When I had this toy as a kid, I lost this. I think I got two of these, and on both times, I lost the Crane Zord, and I was devastated because, again, I said this was my favorite Megazord as a kid, mainly because of this sword. It just looks so cool, uh, and it didn't help that in the movie, I would say the Crane was one of the most badass-looking Zords, uh, so there's that, too. Now, she forms the head. To get her to form the head, you just want to fold her neck up, fold her little head down. And I apologize, she's missing a sticker right there on the side of her face, but it looks just like that, just not as crappy. Uh, and fold the wings back, and there we have the Ninja Megazord's head. Now we're ready to form Ninja Megazord. So, to do that, we just want to take the yellow Zord, plop that on. Uh, now it's held in by just two pegs, and then this little slot kind of keeps it from wiggling around. That pegs up like that. You want to put the blue sword on the arm, the red sword on the right side, and stick the head in. And there we have the Ninja Megazord. Now, considering the fact it's called the Ninja Megazord, it doesn't look very ninja-ish. That's, that's my first observation. Apart from that, it's very colorful, very, very fun. Much like more current Megazords, it is basically a brick. Maybe it's a little bit less brickish than some other ones, uh, but the arms can move forward on both, and the legs can bend. Though you do run the risk of the frog's arm kind of uh, breaking free. Uh, and it does have feet articulation, so if you did want to do a cool uh, running pose, you could probably get something, something remotely close. To a running pose. And that is a thing. So now that we've got the Ninja Megazord all put together and all pretty, uh, let's say they're in a, a fight against a monster and things aren't going all that well. Well, they're going to want to call in the Falcon Sword, who, uh, who will first attempt to give more firepower by folding up like this and shooting missiles out of its wings. Chances are, nine times out of ten, that's not going to do the trick, in which it's going to want to call upon the Falcon Sword to connect to the back. And to connect the Falcon Sword onto the back of the Ninja Megazord, basically all we want to do is just fold the feet out like that and stick it right onto his back. 
And there you go. And now he also has the power of flight. When you connect the Falcon Sword, he can fly and whoosh around and all that jazz. Now, I mentioned earlier that you didn't need this blue piece. And that is because in the movie, uh, they actually used this sword. And this sword belongs to the Shogun Megazord. And if you wanted more movie accuracy, uh, you can have him hold that sword like that. And that's essentially how it looked in the movie. And again, I think that looks pretty okay. To be honest with you, I dig it. That basically does it for my look at the Ninja Falcon Megazord. I love this Megazord to death. I've loved it since I was a little kid. Uh, and I will continue to love it. Because I think, uh, from a style aesthetic, it's one of the most unique Megazords. It's got a very, very sleek look that I feel like Bondi uh, tries to avoid nowadays, for whatever reason. Uh, and it just looks like a toy. And apart from the MMPR original Dino Megazord, I would say that this Megazord with the wings is probably the second most recognizable Megazord, uh, for me at least, when I'm thinking of Power Rangers Megazords. So, that does it for this review, guys. Thank you so much for watching and sticking with me. I really hope you enjoyed this review. I'm going to be doing a lot more classic Power Ranger Megazord reviews in the future. So I hope you stick around because I've got a lot more in the works. Believe me. Believe me. It's going to be quite a year. I'm just going to say that and leave it at that. So, guys, again, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, do all that business. And I will see you all in the next video.